Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Keith. Morning, Ev. You alright? Yes, thank you. See, you've got your stools in, your new tea section. Yeah, they came uh, yesterday. yesterday. Are they still manufacturing the end section? They're not manufacturing anymore. Oh, well, you're doing, don't you? Yeah, we're going to have to make it out of uh, what we've got yeah. left over. Yeah. You know, in the 1940s, on the wing they put um, hard rivets in which were countersunk right on the leading edge. Yeah. Underneath the leading edge, on the pop rivets, were they countersunk? Uh, or were they, did they do countersunk in those days? Uh, they countersunk pop rivets, yeah. I, it, I can't remember whether they countersunk or not. Yeah. I can't remember. But they had those I didn't in, take it apart. Uh, no. Uh, Dennis took it. What is there about a couple of thousand clearance on the holes there then? Yeah, they're just transition fit, aren't they? Yeah. Not interference, but yeah. Well, I suppose they are slight, slight interference fit. Yeah. Because trans transition is a, a slide in the fit. Yeah. But these are just it must be a, a thou or so. Yeah. Not a lot. And you got what? Two more ribs in? Yeah, I did them on Monday. All the ribs we've got ready, other than that's just in position just to keep it off the ground. Yeah. The very end one, because that's still got to have a piece of extrusion to fit it to it. Oh yes, on that lee on the bottom edge then. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just pinned in position. Yeah. But everything from there onwards is fit. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, we had ice cream yesterday afternoon. Okay. It was nice. Oh. Company Perk, I think it was. Oh, was it? Oh, good. This is the front or forward leading edge of the French wing. On this shot you can see the main door former has another former fitted inside of it. Dave is manufacturing the inner former to fit in the outside of the door frame. This is to give it extra strength. These are e easier compared to anything, yeah. a lot easier to turn these around really quickly. Yeah. Obviously it's not quite the shape yet, you're looking at that. Yeah. From there down to there, yeah. and then it's got the shape. Yeah, and I said, I mean, how many sets of rivets will you put in to secure both together? Um, not, ma not many, probably just a couple of rows in between just to hold it together. Yeah. You've got loads of rivets going through there, and obviously when that's bent over, they're going through there as well. So yeah. It's going to hold it firm, isn't it? Hold it hold in position, yeah. Yeah. So. This is the side Keith was working on on my last visit. He has now added the top boom, completing the inner side of the front spar, and has turned the spar over.
All the leading edge ribs in place are now riveted. There are four new ribs to make. These were crushed and damaged so much they couldn't be saved. These ribs look very flimsy. They are no more than 32 thousandths of an inch thick, but with the stringers and skins riveted, become a very strong structure. One of four middle tank ribs in place in the rear spot. Keith runs his eye over the tank rib before offering it up to the rear spar. And it got crushed. The second tank rib is pinned in place. KB976 rear fuselage. This area is where the rear wheel fits. I guess Dave and Phil will move into this area when they have completed the forward section of the rear fuselage. This video is of the same section of fuselage shot from the floor. All the associate parts have to be pinned together before any riveting takes place to make sure there's no stress in the construction. I asked John how the construction of the outer wing jig was going. 
This will be attached to rib 5 on the outboard section of the wing. So you've got, one, you've got an upright spade, they're lying on the floor. Yeah. But we can't bolt them down yet because we need to know how close or far away from the um, from the end of the wing they need to be. Yeah. And then we've got to work out of a way of attaching that to rib 5. But in a way where we've got a little bit of yeah, adjustment. Sort of movement. Yeah. Because if we need to work in that area, we need to be able to take it off. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, of course you do. And because you can't sort of fit something to the the jig part and then bolt it to rib five and then bolt it to the ground because the, the process of bolting to the ground it might just move it a little bit because it's only gravity holding there and then if you want yeah. to get some more bolts could move and strain it. Yeah. So we have got to be able to bolt that down and then put something on it to actually meet up with the uh, with the ground. Oh, we can crack it on by the way, aren't we now? Yeah, it's really coming on. But is there a much what will hold you up? Painting holds us up, basically. Pardon? Paint, painting will hold us up. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. because for that leading edge, um, as all the string is, they're, they're all cleaned. Yeah. Basically all cleaned, ready to go, and all the cleats are. Um, but there's quite a few hundred cleats that need to be painted. Tiny little things. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a big thing like that, paint that, is, is, is a double. Yeah. Because you've got a big area, but a little cleat, one, one of these little cleats on the toe. It, yeah. It's is pretty hard to paint because it, it's so light, yeah. it tends to move and you've got to get all around it. Yeah. The, the big item doesn't, doesn't cause you've got to, got to remember that the, uh, the painting yeah. is generated through compressed yeah. air so it'd, it'd be blowing yeah. anything right around. The yeah. yeah, preparation and cleaning is a big time concern, mm. isn't it? Especially when it comes to paint, you don't want any, any, any oil or grease on there because the paint won't be good for deer to it and just flake off and you don't have to square one again. Yeah. Alright, oh, thanks John. <laughs>